Hey guys, Dan here. Hey, today I'm out in my shop with my Grizzly 0709 14 by 40 gunsmith lathe. Now I've had this bad boy for about 10 years. I don't use it a ton, but when I do use it, I really like it. The problem is that it wasn't dialed in very well. So I, I jump on the thing, use it, make the part. The part is functional, but it's not really nicely finished. So recently I bought some new cutting tools from a place in Canada. They're really nice. I'm excited to use them. I changed my quick change tool post to a different style that's a little heavier. So today I'm going to put a tachometer on this thing. I bought a tachometer. It's the display, the pickup and a magnet. I bought it on Amazon for 20 bucks and it's actually really nice. I actually bought two of them. So if I wreck this one, I can put a second one on or have spare parts. So I'm gonna take a look at the lathe here and see how I can maybe make this all work. I did talk to the guys at Grizzly and they said they've never done it, um, but it doesn't look like it's that hard to do. So let's take a look at it and see if we can put a $20 tachometer on this Grizzly. So here's the tack I picked up on Amazon. You can get it in several different colors. I chose the green to match my DRO. Here's a project box I picked up to put the tack in. I just wanted to keep it as small as possible to make it less intrusive. And then picked up a little bit of wire because I don't have anything that small. And some tie wraps and um, uh, sticky tabs for the tie wraps. And here's a AC to DC converter. It puts out 12 volts. We only need a tiny bit of power and we're going to steal it right off the lathe. Here's the tack pickup itself and the magnet that goes with it. Just make sure when you put that magnet on uh, that you have the right side facing out because it'll only trigger on one side. So just give a little test and mark it before you actually install it on the lathe. Here's the display, nice little unit, four digits. It's got kind of a matte finish on it, just a microcontroller and a bunch of little stuff in there and a clock. Now here's the diagram for wiring. It's basically power, ground, and a trigger from the Hall effect sensor. Nothing fancy, just hook it up as the chart shows here. So here's where we're going to steal some power off the lathe. I noticed the work light uses 24 volts AC and uh, we're not taking much power so I figured we'd put our AC to DC converter right on the uh, same transformer that the work light's going off because we're only going to take a couple milliamps. So I follow that back up and if you see here, you can see outputs 32 and 33 are 24 volts. Uh, 32 is a neutral and 33 is the hot side. That comes out of the transformer and just goes out through a breaker for the light and then kind of winds down and uh, goes out one of the cables out to the work light. So that'll be fine for power. That's all we'll need. Okay, so let's take a look at the lathe in the back here. So all the breakers and relays are, and I'm just going to jump in here on terminals 32 and 33, just tied in with the lamp, pull a little power off there. You can see up in the transformer, it tells you it's 24 volts AC. So we're going to uh, rob our power from there. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. So we need to pick up every rotation of the spindle, but I obviously don't want to put this sensor outside because it'll get covered in goo and I want to hide it. So we'll pull this cover off this other side of the spindle here and see if there's a spot maybe we can install the sensor and the magnet for the pickup. So here you can see I've got the magnet already on the spindle shaft here because I was tinkering around with it before. And um, you can see here it's it's epoxied on there. I rubbed off a little bit of the steel just to scratch it up so that thing would stay on there, but it'll be fine. And I was also looking for a place to put the bracket, right? We're going to need a, some kind of a bracket to hold that uh, sensor still. So I noticed this hole right here is already threaded and ready to go. So Here's the bracket I fabbed up. It's just a piece of aluminum I had kicking around the shop. It's an uh, eighth or maybe a little thicker than that. And I just bent it. I bent it at a slight angle so I could fit the mounting bolt in and fit the sensor in and kind of have the sensor be at a 90 degree angle to the spindle so the pickup works well. 
So here you can see I've got the sensor put in and I'm just trying to kind of get that aligned up. I had to do a little bit of tweaking on the bracket to get it to line up okay, but honestly it doesn't have to be very close at all. It, it seems to work pretty well, even if they're not perfectly lined up. So I put these little tabs on here to tie wrap the wire to. They're actually really strong. I just cleaned off the paint with some starter fluid I had kicking around and I'm gonna run my wire right through this existing knockout. So here it is all lined up. It's uh, pretty close. It's about uh, two or three millimeters away and it picks up just fine. So here you can see I've got it installed running the wire down these mounts for the tie wraps and it runs into an existing hole in the box and I've got the wire that's going up to the display coming out of that same hole so I didn't have to put any new holes and I tie wrapped it underneath. Now here's the display in the box I'm going to use. I want to keep it as small as possible to kind of limit the size of the box so it looks like it belongs there. Here I've measured the display and I'm going to measure the box as well and kind of figure out what I need to cut out. So I actually use the uh, calipers to just scratch some lines inside the cover and that's what I use to actually cut it out. Now here's the display pushed through the cover. It's got some snaps. It just snaps right in there so it looks great. And here I just hooked it up to just make sure it's working and just kind of pass the magnet near the sensor. So this is what it'll look like on the unit itself, you know, when it's installed on the lathe. I didn't want to cut any holes in the lathe, so I used this double-sided tape to hold the display on, and it works great. This is where the display will live. I chose this location because I didn't want it sticking out above the lathe because I cover the lathe up when I'm done. That DRO pops off and just drops in the tray so I can cover everything up when I'm done. Not ideal, but it'll work. Here I chase the display cable up the back so I can still take the splash pan off without taking it apart. Here you can see the cables for the display and the sensor come in. I've got them all soldered together and I'm going to double side tape this A to D converter inside the box so it's out of the way. You should probably have a fuse on the red wires there on the AC side like a 1 amp slow blow or something but that converter is short circuit protected so if there is any kind of a problem, it'll be inside that box. So here we go, let's run it up. You can see the display's on. The shutter speed of the camera makes it flash. It's actually really nice and solid. So uh, spin this thing up to 2000 RPMs. So I'm sure the tack is correct and the lathe is a little bit off. When you shut down the lathe, you can see it samples on the way down. And the last sample it gets, it holds for about 10 seconds so it's kind of weird it's kind of annoying but no harm no foul and it will go back to zero so finally here's a picture of the Hall effect sensor triggering every time the magnet goes through and uh, seems to work nice and well so this is probably the best 20 bucks I spent in a long time and I'm hoping it helps me with repeatability in terms of turning different materials on the lathe because I often forget what speed I use so thanks for watching